Thank you for joining us for another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. We're coming to you from Upper Hill here in Nairobi. And we have a very interesting guest today. We'll be speaking to Andrew Chimponde, who is the CEO of Shelter Freak. And really, who is Andrew? Let's take a look at his profile. Andrew Chimponda is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Shelter Afrique. Chimponda, a Zimbabwean national, is a Chartered Accountant and member of both the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants and the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Zimbabwe. He holds a Master of Business in Administration, majoring in International Finance from Durham University Business School in the United Kingdom. He is currently completing his PhD thesis on innovative housing finance solutions for the affordable housing market with Da Vinci Institute in South Africa. Chimponda has more than 20 years experience in finance, business executive leadership, experience in real estate, finance, retail and wholesale banking. He joins Shelter Freak from Housing Investment Partners Limited where he served as the group chief executive. He has also worked as the managing executive for National Housing Finance Corporation, which is the largest development financial institution in Southern Africa. He has also served as a director and managing executive levels, focusing on home loans at ABSA and the Standard Chartered Bank in South Africa. Thank you so much, Andrew, for making time for us. Yes, Andrew, yes. I don't know, in your language, do you say uh, bonjour? Bonjour, we'll understand it's French, yes. <laughs> uh, my language, I guess you'll say Magadi uh -huh. There might be a bit of a mouthful for you right now, but yeah, <laughs> sure. All right, such an honor to have you on the program. First time we are featuring a CEO from Shelter Freak, mm -hmm. and it's a big deal for us. And of course, your name speaks it all, the man with the strategy. Oui, yes, yes. And uh, just to kick off this interview, just walk us through, Shelter Africa has had a turbulent mm. two years that uh, did see a lot of projects being put on their eyes. Mm. And from where you sit, what progress are we seeing so far from the brand? Okay, well, thank you very much. And thank you for having me as well. Um, I appreciate that. Well, Shelter Africa was close to new business for two years. Of course, that's problematic because if you're in the business of financing, you have the result of your loan book, you know, kind of reducing. If we looked at our 2018 results, our loan book reduced by 33%. Our revenues, also interest revenues, reduced by about 19%. So that's been a bad time. But however, there was a reason why we needed to take stock, reorganize, and then come back to the market. And uh, that's what we've done now. We've come back to the market. We've got an important and a critical strategy to roll out. And I'm happy to be able to have that opportunity to share that with you. All right. 33% of the loan book is not mm -hmm. pocket change. Yeah. If you were to do the extrapolation for us, how yeah. much is this worth? Well, that would be worth our loan book was you know, uh, 250 million in US dollar terms, then it's reduced by the 30%, so the 33%. But, but I think having said that, it was because we were not doing any new business mm. for two years, and then we were having our clients pay back their loans. Yes. So then the loan book was, was declining. But I think it's something which we find is something of the past now. Mm. And we want to be back in business with the exciting strategy to actually start to create a bit more relevance in terms of what our purpose and our vision is. Interesting. Uh, let's talk about the present. We're yeah. done with the past. But yes. uh, Andrew, Kenya is at the cusp of uh, taking on a very ambitious agenda. That yes. is the big four. Mm -hmm. And one of the key pillars of the big four is the housing component. Yes. And uh, of course, uh, it seems to be a big task for the government looking at across Africa. Mm -hmm. Governments are not supposed to be in business. They're supposed mm -hmm. to give you a facilitative environment. Yes. The private sector has also been on the chopping board. Mm -hmm. They are being told they don't have capacity. Mm -hmm. I don't know, what is your feeling about this? Can the private sector play a part in the big four, especially to build 500,000 housing units per year? Yes. Look, I do believe that private sector can and must play a part because the housing problem also invariably affects the private sector because the employees 
uh, cannot be staying in informal settlements or slums. They, they must be housed. Yeah. That, that's a that's a, a right for for the uh, for the employees um, of the private sector, but talking about the big four mm. uh, for Kenya, um, I wanted to explain that of course Shout Africa is owned by 44 countries, and we are happy to be hosted by the Kenyan government. But if we zero in on the big four, we are very very uh, close to the big four agenda as it relates to housing. Uh, we believe that uh, those um, targets are achievable, but with collaboration. So we as Shelter Freak um, have, uh, actually have developed, in line with the big four, a, a private-public partnership product, which allows us to be able to support developments that are built at scale, more than a 1,000 units, mm -hmm. and we provide technical assistance. We also provide funding assistance so that we deal with the supply side of housing. Because in terms of our research, there's a shortage of 3 million houses in Kenya alone. But if you look at the mortgages in, on the market, you only have 24,000 mortgages. There's a problem there. I agree. Yeah. Out of this 24,000, mm. it's quite uh, gobsmacking, if you mm. ask me. Yes. Uh, we only have 7% mm. of it being people in formal employment. Yes. The rest are houses that people have built by themselves. Yes, That's, that, that, that is correct. So that is a crisis, according to Shelter Freak. And what we've done is we've looked and we said, how do we assist the demand side? So with the initiative from the government of the Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company, mm. the purpose is clear. They are lending money to lenders. These are the commercial banks. Why? So that they can de-risk uh, their housing portfolios and allow them to go deeper in terms of access to housing and also improve the affordability of the houses because those commercial banks now can provide longer tenures mm -hmm. and also lower interest rates and the intention is to increase affordability. So we as Shelter Africa have actually gone ahead and invested into equity into Kenya Mortgage Refinance Company of two million US dollars which has also leveraged you know another you know 28 million US dollars because we believe in Kenya and most importantly, we believe in adding value in housing. There's that big conversation as well, Andrew, around accountability. Mm. It's one thing to have people deducted this fund. Mm. It's another thing for the fund to be used for its genuine purpose. Mm. And you and I know pretty well that uh, African governments are struggling with issues of governance and yes. corruption. Yes. Not just in Kenya. Mm. Look at West Africa. True. It's a widespread uh, pandemic, if you ask me. Yes. So what are the guarantees, really, if you look at uh, that young man who is being deducted and he knows or sh uh, she knows that this fund is not secure? Mm. If you look at the penalties that people are going to pay in, mm. in the event that this money is squandered, mm. it's just 10,000 shillings. That's about $100. Mm. Yes. Look, I think across Africa, you know, governance, graft, those are always issues or problems. But you have to look at now the leadership. Uh, and you find that the president, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, has come out in the open for a zero tolerance towards any corruptive behavior. I think that is positive. Mm -hmm. That's a start. You look at your neighboring countries like Rwanda, the same. Th those things can be resolved. We cannot build houses or, or come up with initiatives because we are scared that people you know, might be involved in corruptive activities. It's, it's, it's an attitude, attitude, well, it's an attitude, attitude change you know, yes. Yes, that, that, that is required. And what we see is there is a political will. And, and I think when I look at what I've seen, especially on the fund side, even though employers and employees have not started contributing the 3%, that generates the 56 billion per annum estimated. What, what we are seeing is, if you look at the interest from the potential beneficiaries, the Bomayangu website, you know, from the housing department, they didn't even launch formally the website, but already they've got 200,000 interested parties. That tells you that there's going to be offtake. That tells you that there's a serious demand. So yes, you know, when it comes to um, corruption, there are government agencies, like any organization, that their job is to provide that oversight. Like in a company, we have internal auditors, we've got external auditors, but it doesn't mean we don't do business 
because there's no trust. We have to continue to do business and follow up on our mandate to execute and ensure that you know, we reduce the shortage of housing to the extent that we can, given the opportunities that we have. And Andrew, as we near the tail end of this interview, of course, uh, as Shelter Africa, uh, you're doing a splendid job when it comes to uh, capacitating uh, mm -hmm. governments and institutions. Mm -hmm. And just walk us through the pipeline of projects you're looking at this year, mm -hmm. over and above what you've already indicated around the mm -hmm. affordable housing. Uh, are there any other projects that are coming up soon? Yes. Okay, so it's very important that um, I also point out the fact that not many developers can actually develop at scale a thousand units and above. Mm -hmm. So what is important for us was to capacitate those developers. Uh, in doing that, what we've done is we've actually created a, a Shelter Africa Center of Excellence to show that we are adding value. We've invited the contractors to a masterclass contractors, developers, which will take place for two days uh, next week to give them training on public-private partnership, to, 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 to create capacity building um, material for free because we want to add value. Why? Because at the end of the day, those are the same developers that need to support the Big Four agenda and capacitating them is very, very critical. So when we now talk to projects, we've already launched um, two big projects, Richland Ponte, we launched that uh, a couple of weeks ago. Before then, we also launched a project uh, with Caribou Homes. Mm -hmm. And we're not it's remaining there. As you know, we've been very heavily involved with Everest Park. It had a bit of negative uh, publicity, but we finished the final phase. We've rectified the problems that were there in the past, and we're happy to announce that people can start moving in and, and taking up um, occupation of their houses in Everest Park. But we cannot only just be in Kenya because we are owned by 44 countries. Mm -hmm. So we've signed an MOU with the Central Africa Republic. It's a country which, as you know, was affected by the war. Sure. But we've signed a, an MOU to do a thousand um, houses there. What's interesting there is the average cost of a house there is very high, 40,000 uh, US dollars, but only 3% of the population can afford. So we're going to go in there with different products, maybe housing, incremental microfinance type of product to meet the requirements of that market. At the um, end of the month, well, actually in May, we already concluded a, a public-private partnership in Rwanda uh, with the uh, you know, development you know, bank of Rwanda. But in any case, uh, this, this will allow us to build 3,000 houses uh, using exciting alternative building methods um, at, a, at a very low cost because our idea is to try to drive the cost down. So in essence, you know, there are other projects we have across the landscape of Africa, but our focus now is to make sure that uh, we support the Big Four agenda as a developmental financial institution. We look at we are the market failures and we, we close that gap. And, and we're excited that you have a government that is raising the profile of housing as a critical and, import, and important um, you know, initiative that needs to be uh, resolved. So we, we want to support that. And I've been very impressed by the proactiveness of the government in Kenya and particularly the Department of Housing. All right. Seems like your job is well cut out. Well, yes, uh, it is. But, um, but I have to say that... Uh, I think at the end of the day, like we emphasized before, it's all about collaboration. It's all, all about a strong uh, you know, political will to make sure that we do resolve the shortages in terms of housing. For us, our vision is clear, decent, affordable housing for all mm -hmm. in Africa because it is their right. Our mission is clear. We believe and we want to be the preeminent provider of advisory, financial and research solutions geared at resolving the severe need for housing in Africa. And how are we going to do that? It's through ensuring that we create public-private partnerships that enable us to achieve you know, sustainable developmental impact. It sounds like a, a mouthful, but I think the point we're trying to stress here is it is a crisis, and with a crisis, we have are looking at allocating no less than a billion result, you know, a billion US dollars in the, in the strategic cycle of our strategic plan to try to 
at least make a positive difference in the housing landscape. A billion dollars is not a lot in housing terms, mm -hmm. but however, it's a start. All you know? right. Yeah. All right. Quite uh, ambitious plans you have there, Andrew. Sure. And uh, what would be your parting shot, really, to the market? Right now, there's been that lull with Shelter yeah. Freak. And, uh, of course, uh, investor sentiment had waned off yes. on this particular institution. Mm -hmm. But really, what are your assurances to the market? Mm. No, thank you for that important question. Uh, well, I think what's important to the market is, you see, our customers are the developers. Our customers are the banks. Um, the message is very clear. Shelter Freak is open for business to those who want to take advantage of the products of Shelter Freak. Mm -hmm. Shelter Freak is and will always be unique because it gets its funding from the member states. So when it comes to credit lines for banks so that they can on lend to do mortgages, our pricing is competitive, our tenure is competitive, we can even lend up to 10 to 15 years. You know, other normal banks cannot do that. When it comes to supporting developers, because we're a developmental financial institution, when we go into public-private partnerships, we can take up equity, we can take up mezzanine or junior debt, we can take risk, which other banks will not be able to do. So we are there to make sure that we resolve any market failures and we'd like to encourage <coughs> those developers, those that want to develop at scale, those that have got public-private partnerships in the brewing, to say, come to us if you need technical expertise on either raising finance, managing the projects, or just, um, just getting funding for that matter. Because our funding has a catalytic um, purpose and role. And on our backs are bigger global developmental financial institutions that are willing to come and partner and syndicate loans and share risk with Shelter Freak. So we are only as good as those parties that want to take use of this unique advantage and these benefits as well. All right. In less than 30 seconds, Andrew, are there any collaborations with the, the Nairobi Securities Exchange that you are considering? Well, um, it's a very good question. We will be considering that. I think our focus right now is finalizing our debt restructure agreement, uh, which we've reached final stages with our eight lenders, of which we've got six developmental financial institutions. And then once we've done that, we, the intention now is to go to market to raise uh, through the Capital Markets Authority, be it additional you know, bonds or capital, to be able to support you know, the, the debt or capital required to fund our ambitious uh, growth in terms of housing finance. All right. Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> OK, my pleasure. It's such a pleasure having you on the program. No, it's such a pleasure being here. Thank you so much, and thank you to your viewers. All right. I really I'll, appreciate I'll be holding you to account to see whether the units will be built. Well, I think you should, because exactly that's what we're here for. All right. So, um, yeah, so let's, let's see. I think let's have the same discussion a year from now. All then right. you can ask, what units have we built? Shelter Freak, ready for business. Amen. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. We've been speaking there to Andrew Chimponda, who is the CEO of Shelter Freak. Just uh, breaking it down for us in terms of where the housing agenda ought to be. And they are quite optimistic that things will be picking up in this particular financial year. Well, that's all the time we had for here on The Trading Bell. Time for us to take a look at 